So a big part about learning how to paint is learning how to actually paint what you see instead of painting what you think something looks like. Your idea of a flower versus what a flower actually looks like. So we're going to be doing that in the class tomorrow. We're going to be looking at flowers. Um, these are Dutch realist paintings. You're not expected to do that. that. <laughs> but um, we are going to be really using this idea that flowers are really individual um, and, and to be able to paint them and give them some life, you have to really be looking at them. These are um, Manet, some of my favorite all-time paintings are these. Um, we're also going to be making decisions based on color with these Van Goghs, a simple palette. Um, Morandi, there's no flowers, but I thought it'd be good to show you what you could do with some different shades of white and gray. So we're going to be talking a lot about decision making tomorrow and, and what are you going to decide to do with your painting. Are you going to decide to have a background that's all very similar shades and then pops of bright like the Monet water lilies? Are you going to do something more like Bataro, who was did these kind of out of the natural realm colors, these crazy bright oranges and pinks, um, and even his dullish still lifes had these, these bursts of colors, um, these fluorescents. Would you like to do that, like stretch the boundaries of what you're actually seeing? Or more like Brock, who used a really beautiful, simple um, color palettes. Rousseau, who, you know, he's famous for his jungle scenes. You can kind of see that in some of these vibrant things. Or are you going to look more at folk art, like Maria Prinkich, I can't say her name, Prinkichenko? Um, or Milton Avery, These would you like to do more of a flat 2D almost depiction of what you see? Or... Would you like to do something more creative, like Picasso, where obviously this is not what he's seen, but he's interpreting this, and so he's observing and taking that. Um, Lichtenstein, you know, you can go graphic. You can you can observe it and go crazy with it. This is not obviously what Picasso saw. This is not what Stuart Davis saw, um, you know, and this is not what Bernard said. But, and you know, or do you want to use the flowers as a basic for something very mystical and creative like Chagall did, where the flowers are the centerpiece, but there's a story going on around it. Would you like to do something like that tomorrow? Um, Fleur Coles, Coles, who had a Fleur magazine, you know, did more of an illustrative kind of depiction of the world. But again, they all observed these flowers, and then they took it somewhere extra. Um, Charlie Harper, who is more, you know, known for textile, but like he depicted uh, the repetition that he saw in nature. Um, that might be something fun to explore when you're looking at flowers tomorrow is, is how tightly do you want to pack them in or loosely. Um, Mary Faden took flowers and just told a whole story with what was around the flowers, the landscape in the background and the Guinness bottles and the, what kind of mugs she used. You know, you could certainly feel free to bring in something if you know you'd like to paint something in a still life that matters to you. Um, you can put that with the flowers, uh, you know, or Louise Dowd, um, who would you like to do maybe just a close-up of one flower or the back of a flower or really turn it into more of an abstract painting um, instead of an entire still life, which is what, you know, Georgia O'Keeffe obviously did, was she made this whole other world by just looking up close. Um, and again, Andy Warhol, he just simplified it to the most basic shapes. Um, same with Alex Katz. You could do this. You could just make it the most basic. You could observe what is the simplest shape that I could create out of what I'm looking at. Um, how could I use it in a pattern? How could I um, how could I duplicate it and replicate it and create something else entirely? What I'm seeing, Chris O'Filly made it a whole the front part of a painting, and then what was really interesting was happening behind it. You could do that. It might be really hard. Um, uh, Makaro Machiko, who's a Japanese contemporary painter, does these crazy, wonderful worlds. You could really go nuts with the colors um, that you're observing. You could exaggerate them or stretch them out. Um, Hilary Picas sticks flowers in the middle of these contemporary scenes that tell us so much about her life. Um, we learn a lot about her. Or another really interesting contemporary painter is Jonas Wood, who who, who is observing and seeing, but then really making his own style out of this and changing colors and and um, changing the palette of what he's seen so we could you could really experiment with that tomorrow and again we learn a lot about um, their their life and um, Nigerian artist Nikiti I can't say middle name Crosby who does amazing almost like text textile looking collages um, in her work so 
tomorrow should be a lot of fun. It'll be about looking at the flowers, but then what can you do with what you see and how can you go beyond what you see? Okay, see you tomorrow. Thanks, bye.